The other two pillars of the format here, uh, Mono Black, he took down a burn deck in the top eight. He took down a control deck in the top four. Now we'll see if he can take down the mid-range deck and really, you know, the deck to beat in Mono Black Devotion. It is a nice deal here for Blackmore that he is going to be on the play. I think that's going to matter a lot. It looks like he's taking a mulligan right now. We'll get confirmation on that because you see a Schoolcraft looking at his opening hand, I believe, right now. So it looks like Blackmore is taking a mulligan at this point. Um, might still be shuffling, but yeah, it looks like he's on his way down to six cards. Schoolcraft looks happy, happy. So we'll see these players begin here in just a moment. If you're a Blackmore fan, you're hoping that he stops at six for his mulligan and is able to find a hand here to really get things rocking and rolling. Yeah, so what the advantage that Blackmore has, and as we've seen in, you know, both top four, top eight and top four, is that his creatures, you know, really excel on the power to mana cost curve. You know, he has stuff like Experiment 1 into Fleece Main Lion into Brimaz. He can make his, you know, these are all creatures that attack for more than their mana cost. Uh, however, against a deck like Mono Black Devotion that's full of removal, uh, even, even really efficient creatures tend to die to kill spells. So the pressure is on Schoolcraft to remove Blackmore's early plays, but if he can do that, he should be in a pretty safe spot. Temple of Play to get things started off here in the finals for Blackmore. A little bit better than Slicing the Guild again. I'm sure he would love for that land to come into play untapped, but he'll have to work with what he does have. Temple of Silence here for Schoolcraft. Again, remember, his Mono Black Devotion deck has eight temples in it, so as a result, he won't be able to curve out just as well as most Mono Black Devotion decks do. We'll see what Blackmore has on turn two. It is a Voice of Resurgence, one of the better cards he can play on turn two, arguably the best honestly, as he does have a Fleece Main line that he chose not to cast. So he'll start off with a 2-2 two, two, as Schoolcraft will untap and take a draw here. And Voice Resistance is doing a lot of work here. You see that there's a Devour Flesh in Schoolcraft's hand. Um, his, he's definitely on the all-kill spells plan here. You see he has Heroes Downfall, Devour Flesh, and Underworld Connections in his hand, along with some lands. So Voice is a pretty good card in that it will negate that Devour Flesh. You know, it'll actually eat straight up two kill spells from the mono black deck. And yeah, don't forget too, Voice actually makes it so that Schoolcraft has to actually cast his removal spells on his own turn. So makes it so it won't get to be as efficient as he'd probably like to be. The Voice will come across for two. Schoolcraft is going to go down to 18. This is a Fleece main line. We'll see if Blackmore has a land and he does not. One card that he does have in his hand right now, however, is God's Willing. Yeah, but he doesn't have the third land. Right now, the Schoolcraft's hand is a is all kill spells, so a Bio Blight added to his hand, and an Underworld Connection. So a really straightforward game plan of kill everything and then draw more cards. But it's about casting these removal spells on his main phase. Again, the text of the Voice of Resurgence makes it so that he has to do that. So there is a Bio Blight that's going to target the Fleece Main line. If Blackmore actually did have the land for the God's Willing, it would have been quite the turn for him. But as it stands, all he can do is just untap, take a draw, picks up a copy of Advent of the Worm that he cannot cast for a while here. Comes across for two. Schoolcraft's going to go down to 16. And all Blackmore can do is pass the turn back. Does have a Celestia turn to make a creature, however. And here's where Voice of Resurgence can be really interesting in the matchup. Schoolcraft actually doesn't really want to kill Voice of Resurgence, as he'll probably take more damage if he kills it. He'd much rather deal with Voice of Resurgence by getting a blocker, be it a Grey Merchant of Asphodel or a Desecration Demon, and then just, you know, trumping it on the board. Underworld Connection is going to come into play here. A little surprised not to see Blackmore actually cast a Celestia and try to make a 2-2. I think the thought process here is, is that he wants to save that just for Desecration Demon because it is so difficult for him to beat. So he does attack for two more. You'll see Schoolcraft actually activate the Underworld Connections as well. So we'll see a total of three dealt on that turn. Schoolcraft goes down to 13. Yeah, and a little bit of an unfortunate draw there for Blackmore. He didn't make the Celestia, the Knight Token, and then on his draw step drew a second Celestia yeah. Charm. Obviously, you can't, you can't predict that that's going to happen. Of course, of course. So, Schoolcraft has not played a land yet this turn. He can set things up the way that he would like. He's going to start by playing a Swamp. This is five mana, so this looks like a Grey Merchant, probably for four, and it will be for four. So, Schoolcraft's going to go up to 17. Blackmore's going to go down to 16. Yeah, and this is that Trump, that way, the way that he wants to deal with a Voice of Resurgence. He'd rather play a 2-4 and simply block Voice as opposed to trying to remove Voice. I'd be surprised if Blackmore doesn't actually cast Celestia Charm this turn. I think he can afford to use one of those, but he's actually going to opt not to do that as well. That's a little bit surprising. I think he needs to be much more aggressive in this match, especially when your opponent has an Underworld Connection and has pushed himself up to 17. I think you just need to get more aggressive than you would like to to try to get the job done. Well, it's not just being aggressive. If you think about it, like Blackmore's mana is spoken for for about the next four turns. You know, he, he, once he hits his fourth land, he's going to cast Advent, and then he's going to cast another Advent, and then he's going to cast this Boon Seder. Like, there's... An, we're running out of windows in which you're ever going to cast that second Celestia Charm. Yeah. 
as we do see that turn voice resurgence swung and was blocked by gray merchant and blackmore used celestia charm to power through that blocker yeah a perfectly fine play on this turn What's this going to be here? Is this going to be pack rat? Yeah, this is part of the reason, again, that I just don't want to play a longer game. I think that you have to be much more aggressive than you normally would like to be. Again, when your opponent has Underworld Connections and they have a high life total, they're going to get to outcard you. And then a card like pack rat can show up, and that card's probably the hardest card for green-white to beat. Well, it's inevitability on Schoolcraft's side. Eventually, you know, eventually he's going to have enough rats where Blackmore will have no good blocks and no good attacks. Oh. And we see a Temple. It's going to put the card to the bottom here. Did not find what he was looking for. Of course, the fourth land there is useful. However, the fourth land for this particular turn it was very important, I think, that it came into play untapped simply because he needs to cast Adam of the Worm on time. And again, this is part of the problem with the green, white, and just two color aggro decks in general, is that they have to play temples and sometimes guild gates just to facilitate their mana. But those lands coming into play tapped is a big problem for their curve outs. Yeah, and we see here. Um, pack rats are going to start to be made by Schoolcraft. Also, he has the first Advent Storm covered with, uh, by still having a hero's downfall mm -hmm. in his hand. Another copy of Underworld Connections was picked up here. I think he can safely discard that to make a pack rat in this situation. That's exactly what he's going to do. So now he's got two 2-2 two, two rats. Yeah, he's going to use this Underworld Connections in play to basically power out rats and not run out of resources while doing it. Yep. And it's not the first time we've seen this song and dance, that's for sure. Yeah, I imagine one more land will get played so that he can make double rats. Now we see land number seven. So he has, and he has them, you know, it's his telegraph. I like how he has seven lands. He set them out. Well, here's the Underworld Connections pile. Oh, here's three, and here's three more. Yep. It's pretty simplistic, honestly, when you get in this situation for Mono Black. Again, Green White is not a deck that has a removal spell outside of Celestia Charm, but it can only kill one rat, and it's only if they're 5-5. Five five. So now he can actually shift gears here and be the aggressor. He is playing defensively to start the game. You mentioned, you know, just the removal game that he was mm -hmm. playing and choosing not to kill Voice Resurgence, killing the Fleece Main Lion, some other things, while Blackmore kind of stumbled and fumbled around, and now he actually gets to turn the corner. But the thing that makes Mono Black so good is that when they turn the corner, they close games out fast. That's what's remarkable about Pack Rat. So last turn, he cast Pack Rat. And this turn, he's swinging for eight. And next turn, it's lethal. Yeah. It doesn't take any time to get the job done. And that's what's so terrifying when you play against this deck, is they're able to close the game out so, so fast. Now you've got Voice Resurgence on blocking duty, which I'm sure Schoolcraft is really happy with, because he knows he's going to win the battle. Well, this is going to really hurt Blackmore, so he's going to make one pack rat. I think Blackmore's plan is to block and Selesnia charm. However, if he goes for it here, the, mo the Devour Flesh that's in Schoolcraft's hand is going to get excellent value. Yeah. And so this looks like it's going to happen. You've got your damage right here. Again, Pack Rat's going to be Voice Resurgence in combat, so you're not even going to get a Selesnia Charm. So, me, so Blackmore just wanted to upgrade his Voice of Resurgence into an Elemental token here, it looks like, and save a couple points of damage. It's likely that next turn attack is still lethal, however. It's debatable if that's even an upgrade at this point as well. Yeah, you're turning a 2-2 into, uh, two -two into a 1-1, one -one, what might be a 2-2. Two -two. But you're not. You're, you're also no longer constricting the way that Blackmore gets to play as, or excuse me, the way that Skullcraft gets to play as removal. Right. So. Well, it might be a, a bigger creature. It, it's going to die all of the same. So Schoolcraft is going to uh, going to activate Pack Rat here. Why would you activate it? Oh, he's going to cast Life Bane Zombie. Life okay. zombie. Well, I don't know. It's not a Pack Rat. He's going to put Boon Sater into play. He's going to show the grip. I, I'd be surprised if there's a creature over there. And it's two Advent of the Worms, that God's Willing, and a Celestia Charm. So. You know, when you're playing my Black, there's so much of a temptation to cast your cards. But I don't know. That could have been a Pack Rat. I think he's fine. I'd much rather that be a pack rat. Yeah. If I'm in school. If I want to play a three mana black creature, would you rather be a life pain zombie or a fourth pack rat? Give me a pack rat. If you think about it that way, you know, just like, yeah, which one would you have hand? But like, I think I want, I think I'd rather have another lord. Yeah. Because again, when both players have access to each other's deck list, you actually know the range of cards that the opponent can have. So you can put them on a certain subset of cards because you know exactly what their starting 60 is, is going to be. And in this situation, it's like, what can he do to actually beat a pack rat here? And the answer is, well, uh, excuse me, a mountain of pack rats. And the answer is nothing. Right. Um, it's interesting because I think most players, if you give them the option, but if you gave them a card in their hand that was just like 
a star star for two for three mana that, that side of, was a lord. You know, all your rats get plus one, plus one. And you showed like that next to a life bane zombie. I think most people would be like, oh yeah, I want to cast this rat lord. Yeah. You know, rat lords, that looks like a rare. But some reason, when I think when it's an activated ability on a creature, it like doesn't feel as powerful. And you have, so, to, and you have to discard a card. If, yeah, it feels like this drawback where you're discarding a card. It's like, oh, I don't want to discard a card. I want to I want to play this card. This card's good. Like, no, 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 no. Think about, think about this as a lord in your hand. Yeah. Like, and you already have three of that creature type in play. Yep. Like, yeah, you want to play another one? Have you played Merfolk before? It's like, yes, you want the fourth lord. It's awesome. Give me every lord you've got. I want every lord. Here's another voice of research that's going to come down here. An activation of Vulnerable Connection is going to bring Schoolcraft down to 15. Yeah, and it's possible that this attack is still lethal. And if it's not lethal, it's going to be... It's very close, It's really right? good if it's not lethal. And the worst part about Packrat playing against it is, so say this attack isn't lethal, right? Well, Schoolcraft can swing Lifebane Zombie and just say, go. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, if this, that, this attack might not be lethal, but the next one's going to be. Yep. And that's what makes it so difficult to play against. You see Schoolcraft through a pack rat, it looks like, for the turn. He's got a Desecration, even that Hero's Downfall that he's had for some time now. So, you know, a lot of those cards don't really have text at this point. A lot of those cards are just going to be pack rats. Well, I mean, so think about it. This turn, he could swing with three five fives. That's good, but it's actually... It, it might get blocked. But next turn, if he, if he just does nothing, he can swing with five seven sevens the following turn. That seems pretty... When your opponent's at 13, five seven sevens is uh, usually a lethal attack. That's something I would be interested in. Yeah, it means he's going to have to block four of them yeah. uh, with three creatures in play. Yes. Two mana going to be tapped here. This could just be a hard cast pack rat at this point. Sure. And the hard cast pack rat means he saves a mana, which means he can activate that Muto Alt for an extra pump if he decides to. Yeah. So now the three pack rats that are active will be four fours. He can make a pack rat. That'd be a five five at the Muto Alt. That'll make him six sixes. Do you swing the rats or just the zombie this turn? I would swing with everybody. And sim I, the reason I swing with everybody is simply because the rats that I'm going to make, you know, the brand new pack rat that I've made, along with the pack rat that I can make off of the activation, those can just, those can protect me. Yeah. I'm not sure there's a wrong way to attack here. I feel like no matter how you attack, next turn is going to be lethal. There's no wrong way to eat this Reese's. You know, they used to have those commercials, and then you'd see people, you know, they have examples of, of ways that people would eat them, and, and I would say some of them were kind of wrong. That's debatable. I think that's debatable. I don't think there's like a wrong way. Like from the inside out. That's just way oh, too much work. Okay, I'll give you that one. That's way too much like, work. Why would you just... just that, that's ridiculous. Plus, the best part of the Reese's is the outside. Like, Absolutely. the hard part. What if they just made those? There's, there's more chocolate. You know, the chocolate ratio is better on the what outside of the Reese's. What if they just made the outside of the Reese's and cut out the middle? Well, then that's just chocolate. There's a little bit of peanut butter in there. No, if, you, if it's just the outsides. Okay, so there's still be peanut butter Just a little, in. not a lot. All right. But the hard part of the Reese's is the best part. Yeah, no, I'd agree. At least for my money, it is. It looks like a pack rat and a lifebane zombie is going to come through here. You see some double blocks taking place. Again, Schoolcraft knows Blackmore's hand from that lifebane zombie, so he knows he has to be wary of a Slesian charm or things of that nature. Again, this is a situation where if Schoolcraft does nothing, he's okay. Like, if he does stuff, that's fine, too. But if he just does nothing and says, all right, you know, order blockers, let damage resolve, all of that good stuff, that's cool. There's, it's really hard for him to not play this to a winning line. You know, he, he reached the critical mass of pack rats that he needed to. It's just in this particular situation, it's all about just not making things more difficult than they need to be. It's actually a pretty... It's it's pretty straightforward, this particular situation for him. And again, he just doesn't need to make a move. He's so far ahead. It's all on Blackmore to actually, you know, make a decision or make a move in the situation just because Schoolcraft is winning on all fronts right now. So yeah. he is going to organize blockers. He's going to put the elemental token first. Again, this is a 4-4 pack, right? And he, see, he does just pass priority. All right, so this... Now, if he orders it this way, the Voice of Resurgence doesn't die. If he ordered it the other way, the Voice, the voice would and die. the token yep. would yep. die. But, but, I mean, he might be okay with this exchange. And he gets his damage through. It doesn't really matter. It's the same number of blockers on Blackmore's side anyway. So if his primary concern is 
not getting swung back, a lethal swing back, then this seems fine. Uh, Nicholas then post combat went for a desecration demon. It was Celestia charmed. Honestly, he's playing a lot of spells that are not named Pack Rat. Yeah, and you know it, it seems like a minor thing, but you know this is part of the reason that Zvi Mostovich wrote the article about just activate your Pack Rat at all times because when you you know again you're tempted to want to cast other spells, but you don't need to cast other spells. All you need to do is con just continually activate Pack Rat, and there's nothing your opponent when, can do about it. When you're playing it. this tribal deck full of lords, like the fourth lord in a tribe is just such a good card. It's so hard. That's a really high bar. I said, Jason just passes back the turn. Blackmore has a advent of the worm. But now, first of all, he, he uh, is probably done this attack. He, he doesn't really have a way to ever stop this life bane zombie, which is two swings from being lethal. Yep. And I don't really think he doesn't have any reasonable way to deal 15 damage. Yep. That's the bigger problem, right? It's like, even though he's trying to fight this off, this just avalanche of pack rats, the, the real problem here is that I, I don't have a way to deal 15 points of damage. And he's just dead in two swings to life bane zombie. Yeah. So even if Black, even if, excuse me, Schoolcraft just wanted to play a very conservative game of just, okay, attack with Life Bane Zombie, leave all my stuff back, go. There's nothing that Blackmore can even really do about that. Yeah. And this is... There's the advent. Mm -hmm. Again, God's Willing is available. And that's going to go ahead and take a downfall. That's the God's Willing will show up. Sure. So it's going to get to stay alive. He, Blackmore's going to get dropped to one here, it looks like. Yeah, but he's got some blocking to do. Yep. See, the voice is going to get in front of the pack rat here. Going to lose that. Yeah, the rats. And then here's the thing. The, the rats are... All the pack rats just died. Yeah, he's actually going to lose that pack rat that's in They're play, right? They're all dead. Yeah, because it's a 2-2. Two -two, so, yeah. Yeah, so that pack yeah, rat that's pack in play dead. is actually dead, too. Yeah. Because it's state-based. And that's something, okay, Schoolcraft's still going to win this game thanks to Life Pain Zombie, but I'm just going to say the Pack Rats should not all be dead. Yeah, I mean, okay? this, is, this, is, like, this is some serious mismanage of Pack Rat. Like, I mean, all things being honest, like, because, again, like, by casting Desecration even in a bunch of other cards, he's just cast a lot of irrelevant spells. You could have had all Pack Rats. Yeah. They shouldn't, like, when you have Underworld Connections and six lands and a Pack Rat in play, you just get to make two Pack Rats every turn. Yeah, and your opponent will officially just succumb to that. There's nothing they can do. Right, but now all the Pack Rats are dead. Now he's just left for the Muta Vault. Thankfully for him, a Life Bane Zombie, and there's nothing that Blackmore can actually do about that. Is there actually nothing that he can do about it? Yeah, actually, just Stone Zero. He is he could, just dead. He could double Celestia Charm. Pump it and pump then... It, pump it and exile it. You found it. I mean, I, I don't know if he... I think he's already used two charms. I want to say he's used three charms, so that's kind of problematic with the double Celestia Charm play. He, wait, he has one. Hold he on, what's the other card? Did, the other card's half of the worm. <sighs> How sweet would that be? How much justice would there be if that was if he had two Celestia Charms? That would be a crazy way to actually come back and win a game. That would just be the best. If he had seven mana, he could Boon it and then exile it. I like and then it. he'd Look get the boon, and then he'd get the boon, boon sader. Back. It'd, be, he, yeah. it'd be Blackmore's boon sader. Yeah, you see every angle. An attack here for five from Advent of the Worm. Gonna put Schoolcraft down to ten, but there's nothing here. He's hoping that Schoolcraft just doesn't attack with the yeah, life. Yeah, there's beam. nothing that he can do about the life beam zombie coming in for lethal points of damage. And you have to imagine that Schoolcraft. You know, this has got to be something that Schoolcraft learns from in the next game because, again, this was a runaway victory for him, and he's still going to win the game. But I think he's made it much more difficult than he needs to. I mean, yeah, pack rats are sweet. The, the reason you have pack rat is so that once you, like, the reason pack rat's so good in the mono black devotion deck is that once you have an underworld connections going, sometimes you just keep drawing kill spells or you draw like these irrelevant thought seizes or you draw more lands and pack rat turns all of them into game winning lords. So like, oh, you have all these extra cards and you have this great outlet for them. Lifebane Zombie checks Blackmore's hand, sees an advent of the worm and a Celestian Charm, and that clears the way for the other Lifebane Zombies. So, Nicholas Schoolcraft is going to win game number one here with Mono Black Devotion. Up a game over Green White Aggros. We're going to bring it back to the booth here really quick. We've got one more trivia question to ask, my friends. You or me? All right. You or me? I did the last one, so I'm going to let you right, take right. this one home. Fair enough. Directions are yours. All right. So, if you're just joining us, the... The rules in a breakdown is that we will ask a question. This will be Cedric asking a question this round. And on Twitter, 
you have to correctly answer the question and you'll be eligible to win up to a year of Star City Games Premium. Actually, a year of Star City Games Premium. All you have to do is you have to tweet that answer with hashtag SCG Premium. Yep. Attached to your answer. You see that on the bottom of your screen there. At the end of the round, one player from all the correctly ch submitted tweets will be chosen to win a year's worth of Star City Games Premium. It's a pretty simple one. We've asked it before. We'll ask it again. Next weekend, Patrick Chapin, Patrick Sullivan, they're doing coverage. The question is, what city will the Open Series be in? You know where we're going to be. Hashtag answer, SCG Premium. Make sure you're following at SCG Live, and we'll announce the winner at the conclusion of our final match. We'll head back down to the match right now because it's time to take a look at sideboards. My friends, green, white. Matthias, what do we like there? Well, so in the green, white matchup, this is kind. Of, this is tough. You know, he is, he's a creature-based deck against a removal-based deck. Uh, I don't think things get particularly better for him after sideboard. You see he has a Rootborn Defenses, a one-of. He can board that in to protect himself against some of the removal spells. But by and large, I do not like much, many cards in the sideboard in this matchup. You see his anti-blue cards. You see his anti-burn cards. You see his anti-creature cards. No, he's not playing any of those matchups. Yeah, he's against Mono Black here. There's nothing that really stands out as cards that can really help him in this situation. Rootboard Defenses, he might be able to catch Schoolcraft off guard with, but besides that, I don't really like a lot of his options. On Schoolcraft side, I do like his options. He's got a Devour Flesh, three cops of Doom Blade that he can board into. Uh, some number of duresses if he would like to, because there are spells worth taking. You see Spear of Heliata, Johnny Call of the Pride, God's Willing, Selesnian Charm, Advent of the Worm. But at the end of the day, I don't think either player is going to sideboard a ton here. Uh, Schoolcraft gets a sideboard in the obvious, which is three Doom Blades, and you can make an argument for Devour Flesh in this matchup. But outside of that, I don't really see a lot of action here from either player. No, definitely not. Um, Mono Black, especially the, the build that Schoolcraft is playing, um, with the four life beans in the main, is already really well set up to deal with green white aggro. This is a change that Mono Black started doing a couple weeks ago when monsters became very popular. And just as kind of some splash damage here, he just happens to be very good against green white aggro. I think just. In general, too, Mono Black Devotion is just a deck that's good against Green White Aggro. Just like as far as game plans go, if like Urinoid Aggro is trying to be this aggro deck with some sustainability, and Mono Black is just, you know, this control deck that can actually kill you pretty quickly, has a bunch of removal spells to just really stop you, and that's just how it just that's just how it goes. Yep, I would agree. And you know, the Green White's best cards aren't even that good against Mono Black. That's the other issue, right? Where, you know, what are the best cards for a Green White that line up against Mono Black? You can't really think of a best card in the matchup that yeah. if you draw it, it's like, well, I probably win this game if now. If you can get a monstrous Fleece Main Lion, it's pretty good. But then again, they have Devour Fleshes, so that's not even game winning. You know, he has a lot of Flash cards. He has Boon Sater. He has Advent of the Worm. These are cards that... If he can catch Schoolcraft's tapped out, he, they can get damaged before they're killed. But as we saw last game, Schoolcraft's opening hand was three lands, an Underworld Connections, a Bio Blight, a Devour Flesh, and a Hero's Downfall. So kill spell, kill spell, kill spell, land, 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 and way to draw more cards. Yeah. Like That kind of hand is just really difficult to beat on the green-white side. And let's not even forget the green-white side had Voice of Resurgence on turn two, which is a card that kind of blanks removal a little bit, but yeah. at the same time, you know, it's just like, well, whatever, I'll just take two for a couple of turns and I'll figure out what to do about it later. So he had a second Voice of Resurgence, actually, yeah. but the thing is, is that Schoolcraft doesn't need to kill all the creatures. He can ignore some of them. He, he life-gained his way back up, and then he played a pack rat, and that was enough. Not the first time we've seen it. And even though, you know, there have been some cards that have come out that make Pack Rat a little bit worse, you've got Bob Light, Detention Sphere already existed, things like that. Uh, you know, we've seen Pack Rat decline a little bit. These Mono Black decks are still playing four. They're still winning tournaments with them. Yeah, they still play four. I think Bio Blight hurt the stock of Pack Rat, but Pack Rat has always been good against aggro decks that don't have removal spells for it. And particularly with the kind of deck that Blackmore is playing is going to be very susceptible to Pack Rat. The other thing I like, too, is that Pack Rat, for, de for aggro decks that do have removal for it, they force you to have the removal on a certain turn, or you're just in a world of trouble, right? Like, the, the, you know, the Green Red Monsters decks or whatever that have Domri and Mizium Mortars, you have to kill Pack Rat in a certain amount of time, or it'll just take over the game. So not only is it good against aggro decks that don't have removal, it's good against aggro decks that do have removal, because you have to kill it. And also, if they do kill it, it's like, okay, well, we'll just do something else this game. We can play a different game of Magic. Absolutely. That's what makes the card so difficult to beat, is that if you do kill it, they're fine with that. It's it's kind of like the thing with Bitter Blossom, right? Where it's like, well, if you kill Bitter Blossom, I just get to play a normal game. And if you don't kill it, well, you're probably just dead. <laughs> you're probably just dead because my deck goes. My deck decent. becomes yeah. super powered. Uh, I was doing the comparison, the Pack Rat to Bitter Blossom comparison. It's not the first. They time are I've done both that. two drops that make a token every turn. Yes. Pack Rat takes your entire turn every turn for the rest of the game. You just don't do anything else. But 
I suppose making lords is better than making one one flyers. So say, it's it's not like a cost there. Yeah, I mean you're you're growing your creatures by doing that every turn. It's not like you're just adding a one one to the board. You're going two two to three three to four four to five five. Bitter blossom, you get to use all of your mana to do other things, and they eventually grow if you have sign of Una. But I feel like the comparison is pretty apt. I mean, I still think it's similar to playing Legacy Merfolk, just without the Force of Wills. No, just, it's fair. Just every turn you play a lord. You get to do other stuff though. That's what's sweet. In mono black or in, in merfolk? In merf uh, in mono black, you can do other stuff. Like in merfolk, you're basically only playing lords. You do get to do some other stuff sometimes, but like you know, the game can shift where you actually get to do other things, like play connections and draw cards and make them discard and stuff like that. Merfolk, you're just pretty straightforward and you're just defending yourself with a few counter spells. To be fair, when you're packing with mono black, you often aren't doing anything else. That's or true. if you are, it's like you probably shouldn't be. That's true. Experiment one to begin game number two here for Jason Blackmore. Temple of Silence here for Schoolcraft. And it looks like Schoolcraft's hand is, once again, the kind of hand that's very strong against Mono Black. We see a pack rat, some lands, a pair of lands, and then a kill spell, another kill spell, another kill spell. So yeah, three kill spells, a pack rat, and two more lands. This is a very important start here for Jason Blackmore, getting off here by curving out with a one drop into a two drop and attacking for two. It's, this is the kind of start he has to have. It's particularly important that it was Voice of Resurgence, especially with these, this Devour Flesh lurking in Schoolcraft's hand. I wouldn't be surprised if it's appropriate to board out Devour Flesh in this matchup. I could be wrong about that, but I mean, Voice makes Devour Flesh so bad when it's there that it almost feels like you're supposed to board it out. Yeah, now, Schoolcraft went for the temple here. He had some untapped lands. I am a little... I'm not sure about that because he has so much two-mana removal. I feel like the way he loses is by getting really far behind, which is already starting to happen yep. here. This is an attack here for five. Schoolcraft's already at 13. He has not killed a creature yet. And he has to kill a creature when he does on his own turn. So there's Hero's Downfall. That's predictably going to kill Bermaz. That thing needs to be off of the table immediately. Yes, yeah, so now he's on parity. He's killing everything that Blackmore's playing, but he's taking five every turn. Uh, next turn, he's going to want to play a double kill spell. Down to 80 goes. See if Blackmore has like a God's Willing-esque card to blow up a removal spell here. That would be very important for him. Yeah, he's representing God's Willing and Advent of the Worm right now with the mana he has up. Well, Advent of the Worm actually, sorry. Double Advent's green. double green. Yeah, yeah, he actually only has basic, so it's not Advent. It's just God's Willing or, or nothing. You're absolutely right. He does have the Advent in his hand. You see there. Part of the problem with two color decks. Man, it's just not good enough. There's a Deso Demon. Probably can't care too much about that. Take a draw here. Drew well, that's a, good, that's a good draw, right? Yeah. That, I think that's good on this board. Yeah. I would I would use that. Yeah, that's uh, put your Exile the Demon, put Schoolcraft down to three. And it looks like Blackmore's going to get through this game. Yeah, and this, I think this all comes back to just playing the Temple in turn two. I think you just need to play Kill Spell, then Kill Spell, then Kill Spell. Yeah. Now, he still has... A chance here. He could. He can bile blight and devour flesh this turn. No. He'll, have, he'll have to do all of this on his own turn, of course. Right. He doesn't want to do because of voice. He doesn't want to do anything on anyone else's turn. But I, I don't think this is a turn where you can play Grey Merchant. You just need to kill everything. You need to make sure there's enough time to kill everything. Kill, your, kill the stuff, then deploy the threats. I think that's the game plan in this matchup if you're mono black. He has more kill spells than Blackmore has creatures. <laughs> She's Schoolcraft again. Looking at Desecration Demon, that one's definitely off. Has Bioblight, which will take care of Experiment 1. Mm -hmm. And then Devour Fleshing Voice of Resurgence isn't the most uh, appealing play, but it's the play that'll get the job done. Yeah, I mean, he would be dead then if Jason Blackmore can untap and play two creatures. But this is, I mean, this isn't a kill spell. So he's going to go up to five. He's going to go down to at least two on this attack. Let's see if Blackmore can find something here. I mean, all he needs to find is a green mana source. Ah, uh, I spoke speaking too soon. I, I was going to say, and provided it's untapped. Yeah. But. Well, he does get the scry, so that's the benefit of that coming into play. Tapped. Yeah, it's going to be hard at two life for Schoolcraft to not die to this Advent of the Worm. 
Even I mean, though it's going to take a little time to get here. It's going to have to have an instant speed removal spell, though, when it happens. Green Merchant going to get in front of Experiment 1. Not sure he could beat a Sledge in Charm anyway, so, you know, the, the decision here is do you block that or do you actually block Voice yeah. Resurgence to get Voice Resurgence off the table? I'd block Voice. I'd get Voice off the table here. Yeah, Voice is constricting the way that he can play. Pack rat yeah, still going in the down grip. to two seems fine. Yeah, we can play a little pack rat game now. Oh, we need to kill things. <laughs> so I mean, I there's mean, so many creatures that aren't dead. Yeah, I mean, right now what you can do is you can play pack rat, make a blocker. You can potentially double block some things, or just you know block a voice resurgence and then put Green Merchant in front of experiment one again. Right. Those are your options there. I mean, I like going down the road of killing things much earlier in the game. I'm not sure if that's a road that you can still go down now. No, at, at this, this point. point, you're just pack ratting. Well, your pack rats are going to block, so... You don't have to block with one. I mean, you're not beating Celestian Charm anyway, so I don't think that's something that you actually bring into consideration. I think you put a pack rat in front of Voice Resurgence. I think you put Grey Merchant in front of Experiment 1. Wouldn't you want to... I almost want to put a pack rat as well in front of Experiment 1. I mean, just in case there's an advent or something that evolves it. As you see, your advent of the worm means that experiment one's just going to eat the gray merchant. Yeah, but then at that point, you probably, you're going to lose your pack rat, too. Yeah. Oh, I guess it uh, depends on how you organize this blocker, so I take that back. I can actually see your play being correct. Now there are three creatures. Make it four. Four creatures. There's no getting out of this situation now. If there were three creatures, you could actually get out of this situation. There's so many creatures that aren't dead. So many kill spells that we haven't cast yet. Yeah, and this is... You know, when you, if you're schoolcraft at the end of the game, yeah, you, you have know, you have a hand of four of yeah, uh, you three have, kill spells. Yeah, you have a bunch of removal spells in your hand, and you're being killed by creatures. Something has to you know go off to say, like, okay, I probably did something wrong this game. I mean, he has three two mana kill spells against an all creatures deck, and yeah. the only kill spell he actually found time to cast was the expensive one. Yeah, which, which was the hero's downfall. Like voice is a pain. To be fair, voice made those devour fleshes. Like, I think at some point you just have to suck it up and say, yeah, I'm going to spend two cards killing this, to this voice of Resurgence, and I'm not happy about it. I agree you have no choice, especially, you know, he had the opportunity to block voice of Resurgence with Grey Merchant, and he declined that. So now he's just in the world of hurt here where he's going to cast a Bile Blight. The targets aren't great. Uh, he can actually just only go after Soldier in this situation. He's going to start with Devour Flesh on Blackmore. I think you just have to sacrifice Soldier here if you're Blackmore. It's the worst card by a pretty wide margin. Yeah, it's that Worm Token that's the scary one here for Schoolcraft. I'm not sure how he gets around that one. How does one be Trample? I mean, if he's casting one here, he's just crossing his fingers and hoping that... I mean, I don't say how he, he's dead to the Worm Token. Yeah. All right. Yeah. He said, I mean, no, but I actually, okay, so I do like that, the, you know, you do want to play out the kill spells just to make sure that the correct sacrifices are made um, in that situation. And I think, I think going into game three, he's, he's, I think he's going to figure out, you know, I, it's, yeah, like, yeah, it was a game that there was a missed opportunity, but it means that going into game three, like, you get to see it play out, so it's fresh in your mind. I think you get to approach the, the game correctly going into game three. Like, yeah, I mean, we're looking at a different game now because he's going to be on the play here. And, again, this is a situation where I, I think he comes to the realization of, I had to cast those removal spells a little bit earlier because I ended the game with removal spells that are pretty conditional, and they didn't actually do what they're supposed to do in the matchup. Again, it's a situation where, yes, Devour Flesh is actually bad against Voice of Resurgence, but at the same time, you need to get Voice of Resurgence off of the table so it's stops constricting your plays. Right. I mean, it's so hard because you look at that and you, you don't want to cast Devour Flesh into that board. You're like, gosh, I really don't want to spend two cards killing this guy. Yeah. I mean, and it's, again, it's not favorable, it. but that's yeah. part of the reason that voice is good against the deck is that it constricts the way that you can play and it actually stops a card like Devour Flesh or any removal spell, honestly, from actually being good against you. But, you know, at the same time, you can't end the game with a bunch of removal spells in your hand against the all-creature deck. Right. And I think this is one of the reasons that some players, like the black-white mid-range deck, you see plays a split of Devour Flesh and Last Breath is just, is like almost just to address cards like Voice of Resurgence. Yes, yeah. you have to take now, care of that and Mutavolt. Right. Um, now, to be fair, I still like Mono Black Devotion more. I think its mana is really good. I, I like 
how he always has untapped lands, you know, and, and the cards that you actually care about are the black cards. I agree. So, yeah, going into game three here, and I thought that was an interesting thing you are talking about whether or not you want to keep Devour Flesh in. It's really a trade-off, right? So, when your opponent has Voice of Resurgence, Devour Flesh, as we saw there, can be, you can have awkward situations with it. At the same time, Devour Flesh is a two-mana kill spell, and against this deck that's playing one drop into two drop into three drop, like, a two-mana kill spell is something you really want to have access to. Yeah, I mean, it, it is really bad when the opponent has Voice of Resurgence, and it's good otherwise, I, I would argue, just because all you want to do is you just want to make sure that creatures are off of the table. Obviously, Devour Flesh doesn't let you pick and choose for the most part, but it's just better that the creature, that the board is just pretty stable through any means necessary. And I think that's the important thing with Devour Flesh in the matchup. It's like, you know, it's not the most sexy card, but it'll get the job done of just, okay, let's keep everything reduced here so that when I do play Desecration Demon, it's a backbreaker. Yeah. And when I play my other creatures, they're good. So I think one thing you can do in the matchup, we saw Schoolcraft, he started on a temple, and at turn two, we played a second temple to set up for Hero's Downfall. And like, I think in most matchups, that's what you want to do. When your opponent's playing a Voice of Resurgence deck and you have a Devour Flesh in your opener, you may want to have two mana up on that turn so that like you can Devour Flesh in response to a, to a Voice of Resurgence, therefore okay. like, getting okay the that. full value off it. Yeah, I'd be okay with that. And, you know, it's just a, again, it's a situation where if you're the mono black deck, your job is to just kill everything and then just finish them off with whatever it takes. Now, you can play a couple different games, as we saw in the first game. You can just play a pack rat game, but your job is to just kill everything. As so here's a Temple of Deceit. Yeah, and it's interesting. You don't have to kill, and you don't have to kill everything. Like, you can kill the first three guys and then play a Desecration Demon. Yep. You know, or you can kill, if you want, you can actually kill everything if you have Underworld Connections, to be fair. Let's see if Blackmore has a one drop this game. Looks like he has a Soldier of the Pantheon. So he's going to get aggressive right off the bat. Schoolcraft does have a thought seize to cast, so he's going to fire Excellent. this off. I like that he has cast that instead of the turn two pack rat. I don't think curving out with pack rat is as important here as, you know, maybe taking care of some of these voice of resurgences. Yeah, this is actually a really good hand here from Blackmore in game three. He's got two voices, a fleece main line, a god's willing, and a couple of lands. It doesn't hurt that the, uh, that the Temple of Plenty is going to come into play taps, presumably on turn number three. As turn two, Blackmore can play a forest, pick whichever one of those two drops he wants to play. And then turn three, in a perfect world, his land comes to play on tap, so he can play a two drop and protect something with god's willing. We'll see if things actually do break that way. But if not, he at least gets the benefit of scrying with Temple of Plenty. This hand is terrifying to play against with mono black. This is what two voices, which that's that's a pain. Uh, Fleece main lion, which okay, I suppose you can kill it, but it's backed up by God's willing. Yeah, and he had a one drop to go with it. Um, yeah, there's a lot of pressure being put on Schoolcraft's kill spells. I don't think I don't think you can deal with this hand with infinite kill spells. It's too resilient to it. You have you know you have this hexproof monstrous guy. You have a voice of resurgence. You have a God's willing. What I do like in Schoolcraft's hand is how you do deal with this hand is by playing Desecration Demon instead. And that's the game plan he, he can go on this game. Going to do a little bit of scrying here with the Temple of Silence. We'll see where he wants to put this card. He's going to leave it on top before passing the turn back over to Blackmore. So Blackmore will untap that plane. So he's going to take a draw. Let's see what he adds to his hand. Looks like another copy of God's Willing. So. That'll actually probably play a pretty big role here. There's a voice resurgence. Here's an attack for two. Schoolcraft going to go down to 16. And again, he does have the ability to play a pack rack game here. He's a little bit off curve with it. And he has a devour flesh, which again is looking pretty poor in this situation. And there's an ultimate price, so that'll take care of that. Yeah, Alderman Price hits Soldier of the Panther. He knows there are no other monocolored creatures in Blackmore's hand. The last creature is Fleece Main Lion. I like that he uses ultimate price there. Now his last kill spell is Devour Flesh, and he knows that there's a God's Willing in Blackmore's hand. Remember, Devour, God's Willing does not protect from Devour Flesh. Fleece Man Lion going to show up to the party and attack here for two. He's going to put Skullcraft down to 14. The white mana available to cast the God's Willing, so that's actually pretty important. Not right now, but as presumably down the road. Yep. Skullcraft going to take a draw. Looks like he picked up a Mutavolt. He has the Mute Vault, he has the Untapped Land, and he has Desecration Demons. So if you can't kill the creatures, you might as well just outclass them. That's yep. what Demon's going to try to do. Blackmore going to draw a card. Looks like an Experiment 1, so he's drawn some of the small creatures now. All right, now how important is it? There is a concern on the Blano Black side, I was going to say, that this Fleece Main Lion might become a monster. I think that's more of an annoyance than anything. I don't think it's a major concern. Like, if Fleece Main Lion actually had Trample when it became monstrous, I think that would be a little bit more scary, but it doesn't. And so I don't think that's that big of a deal. Yeah, um, like, simply because, like, you can just chump block it all day with a bunch of different things. 
Yeah, he does have a pack rat in hand, so he can chump it for a while. He may need to keep his life total somewhat high. And you see a, a very aggressive attack from Blackmore. He's swinging both Lion and Voice, basically telegraphing, I'm going to Godzilla whatever you block here. Yep, pretty much. He's using, a, using the effect really aggressively to push through what looks to be three point, or excuse me, two points of damage. You know, I actually like this. So I think it stands to reason that not only is, has Schoolcraft not shown another target or removal spell, but Blackmore is, he's, he has to be so aggressive here that he probably just wants to scry one. Like, he, he would, and he'd almost burn the God's Willing just to scry one, but at least this way he gets some damage out of the deal too. He gets two damage out of it. You can look at God's Willing as a shot that just scryed one. Yes. In this situation. Yeah, that is, that, that's a great way to, yeah, that's pretty much what it just did. So he's going to figure out exactly where he wants to put this in. I think if when, when you're on Blackmore's turn, or excuse me, when you're on Schoolcraft's turn, I like the idea of when Desperation Demon Triggers go on the stack, you sacrifice your Voice of Resurgence to evolve your Experiment one and get the Elemental Token and go from there. We'll see if, you know, obviously we'll see if Schoolcraft does anything pre-combat, anything of that nature, as the Scry's going to put the card to the bottom. But I really like that play as well, yeah, to, to sacrifice the Voice, tapping Demon, evolving, getting bigger creatures. You'll have two 3-3s three, and a 2-2 two, two there, and you'll have a white mana available if your opponent has a target or removal spell. We know that Schoolcraft currently does not. He has the Devour Flesh in his hand, but I actually like that line of play of controlling the demon to be able to force through more points of damage. Yeah, Schoolcraft's at 12, so it's not, you know, it's not, you're not setting up a lethal swing, but you're getting close to it. I think especially if Schoolcraft, you know, there's this pack rat in play, so... There's a Deso Demon played. number 2. All right. So yeah, I thought he was going. I thought he was going to play Pack Rat in the land too, and try to start working going down that road. No taps there from Blackmore. Yeah. So he's going to try to. Maybe he kept a Celestia Charm to get through these demons. Well, I know he scryed his card to the bottom. Okay. So he did a blind draw there. It looks like it was another God's Willing. Yeah, it looks like he has two of those in his hand. So he has two. He has God's Willing's numbers two and three. Yep. That's very interesting. Yeah. How to use them is the question. Right. He can push. That means he has a free check to push through five damage. Yeah, but he can't make the same play that he did last time. Like, I think last time it was okay that he made the play that he did last turn, but now he can't do that again. You know, like, attack with all my creatures, save two of them to get through a point of damage. Like, that's not a thing that can actually happen now. Again, I think you have to get a little bit more creative in this situation to push through damage. Yeah, it looks like Schoolcraft's starting to pull away here. You know, Desecration Demon, an all-star against green decks. This matchup's no exception. It's all about its closing speed and also just constricts the way that you can play the game. You can't really attack. You're sure you can, can try to you can try to control it, but then you have to sacrifice creatures to do so. It and is very, very good against green dice. Six six is so huge. Like not only are these guys keeping Blackmore at bay, but like Blackmore's only at twenty. <laughs> Which is kind of a funny thing to say, right? Like <laughs> only at twenty. He's only at twenty. Like there's twelve power in the air. All like we are not that far from, oh, uh, take 12, you know, take 12 gray merchant you for six more, go to two, uh, go to 18, your turn. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, that's reasonable. You know, it's, I mean, these, these guys are huge. And I can see, I can see here just an attack with one desecration demon being perfectly reasonable at this point. Also the fact that he has devour flesh, he can target himself and gain life with it too, just in case anything goes wrong. I really, really like Schoolcraft's position here. Yeah, so we are we're in on Schoolcraft's turn. There's not too much pressure on Schoolcraft to get aggressive here. Is the is the best part of this? Like, he's gonna swing one Desecration Demon. Blackmore's gonna go down to fourteen. Gonna play a land, probably play the Pack Rat here. Yeah, there's an opening here, so Blackmore can make that play where he sacks Voice of Resurgence to tap Demon, but you know. Schoolcraft, thanks to Packard, is just going to have a lot of blockers. All right, Blackmore going to take a draw here. Again, he's got two cups of God's Willing. Looks like he picked up a land for the turn, so not what he was looking for at all there in the plains. He can go monstrous with Fleece Main Line, but again, the creature doesn't get trampled or blocked or thing of that nature. It just becomes indestructible in a 4 4, and that's not the end of the world. And I like the level of aggression Schoolcraft's doing here, and that he's really 
He's not committing to the attack. He's just committing to having a great defense. Yeah, I mean, he's just putting Blackmore in a rock in a hard place right now. And that's, I think, all that you want to do. Blackmore hasn't drawn any of his big creatures this game, like Advent of the Worm or Boon Seder, but at the same time, you know, those cards would just be okay in this game. Yep, he's not giving him any openings to attack. I'm going to activate Pack right here, discard the Swamp. Sure. Schoolcraft going to be left with a Devour Flesh in his hand. Looks like we're getting a little bit of clarification here on exactly what happened. As soon as we do know, we will let you guys know exactly what uh, Jason Blackmore is asking. I like that Packrat can end step cards through a voice of resurgence and not give them elementals. I hate that. There. All right. Because it has to do with Packrat. Well, it feels because it feels like you're playing an instant. Yes, that's true. That's like, true. Yeah, it's technically it's not. Looks like Blackmore was just asking about the timing and if he could respond. And, and do you respond to the discarding of the card or the tapping of the mana, what have you? Oh wow! So Schoolcraft, it looks like has boarded in some number of Drown and Sorrow. That was his draw for the turn. It's actually not bad right now. No, it's pretty good on this board. I like how the removal he's playing is getting around God's Willing. Um, you know, like, we know Blackmore's hand is a pair of God's Willings, and we like, right now his hand is Devour Flesh, Drown and Sorrow. Yeah. Yeah, that's... I still like attacking, yeah. I still like attacking there a lot. Experiment 1 sacrifices to tap one down, but I still like attacking with the other one. Now your opponent goes down to eight, and again, now you've constricted their play so much that Desecration Demons mm -hmm. are just lethal as a monstrosity activation here. Schoolcraft has four blockers. He has Packrat, 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 and Mutavol. Yeah. There's, that's just going to be very hard for Blackmore to swing through. We can actually go on the offensive now, too, with the pack rats if you'd like. And you see Drown and Sorrow in the grip. I wouldn't be so too surprised to see that get discarded to make a pack rat. Yeah, it's, I mean, Drown and Sorrow is not as good as pack rat here. That's, like, true of most cards. <laughs> yeah, most cards lose their text once the pack rat game starts. I recall having a pack rat unlimited, and I once I discarded a desecration demon to it. I remember thinking, "This is silly. I have a desecration demon unlimited, and I'm discarding it." If you drew a black lotus right now, you'd rather just discard it for a yeah, pack rat. Yeah, you discard it for a pack rat. Yeah. You probably still cast ancestral recall. You would that's cast three, it because that's three more pack rats. You would cast it, and you'd be, actually be able to cast it off the temple of deceit. Right. I'm gonna sacrifice the voice to slow that thing down. There's the elemental token. I think Blackmore knows that this is getting a little bit hopeless for him right now, though. Agreed. <laughs> um, so it's like Schoolcraft probably could swing everything and lethal this turn, but why? You know, it's just yeah, you could just you could just swing the demon and say go. Yeah, that's like can, that's safer. He can play just super conservative here. Yeah. He doesn't have to get hyper aggressive or like risk anything. Again, he does have access to the deck list, so he knows that he's not risking a ton. But again, he doesn't have to do anything too crazy in this situation. He doesn't have to do anything. I mean, Blackmore's just Blackmore's sacking his own creatures for life points. It looks like he I, he has turned the corner. He's decided, all right, this is the turn we're gonna win, and that's fine. I, I think he has the win on it. Well, if, honestly, I, he had to fire up the Mutavault to attack for the win, right? Because it looks like he's just attacking with two rats and then Desperation Demon. So Demon's going to come across. It's going to put him down to two. And then you put the Fleece Main Line in front of one creature. You put the Voice of Resurgence token in front of another. You can get a Pack Rat yeah. activation or a Mutavault activation. You're right. So Blackmore's alive, but still in a miserable position. Alive is a nice word to use. Yeah, he is alive. He technically gets to play one more turn. If we're being technical, he gets yes. to do that. Not to mention that Schoolcraft gets to devour flesh the fleece main lion here. Which, you know, that's neat. I actually, I'm gonna guess that Blackmore will probably use, gosh, will he even use the God's Willings to, to it doesn't matter, to save, the, I was gonna say to save the elemental token, but. I mean, I think he should. Sure. But I'm with you in, that, in the fact that it just, do, it doesn't really matter at this point. The, the advantage is too overwhelming for Schoolcraft and his Mono Black Devotion deck. And that's the thing that makes it difficult for the uh, the green and white deck too is that when they get behind like this, there's no way to come back. You know, like a burn deck could you know maybe maybe run a runner some cards to get out of the situation. Desecration Demon is really just a powerhouse in this matchup. If you play it on a, he didn't play it on like he played it on a pretty decent board. 
Like it was, it wasn't all the way stable. Like if it's stable, desperation even is busted. If he's a little behind, it's still okay. It's not great. And I thought that when Schoolcraft played the first one, he was a little behind, but it was still just good enough. Well, it helped. You know, Blackmore had a hand that was really good in the matchup. It was Voice Resurgence, Voice Resurgence, Soldier, Fleece Man, and God's Willing. That's really good, but it's not really good against a pair of Desecration Demons. Yeah. He curved out. He did what his deck was supposed to do, and that's exactly why Mono Black is such a difficult deck, right? In that he did what he was supposed to do, which was curve out and have a protection spell in God's Willing, and actually drew the planes to be able to cast it, and it still wasn't enough. It's a control deck that sometimes has turn six wins. Like, that 20s you on turn six occasionally. That's... I'll say, like, you know, most control decks can't do that. I would hope not. I wouldn't deem them in a control deck then. I don't know what I would call them. I mean, I still call Mono Black. I think it's like mostly a control deck. It feels like it's a control deck. It, it just feels like it's an aggro control deck, honestly. In, in most matchups, it takes the role of a control deck. How's that? Like in this matchup, it is the control deck. But just like, yes, happens to have a 6-6 six, six for four. It can also just play the aggro game, right, though? Because it like can. when it's on the play, it can just play a pack on turn two and say, I'm not the control deck, I'm actually the aggro deck. But I'm an aggro deck that, you know, your deck can't actually stop from being aggressive. Yeah, it has this funky win con where it's like, oh, by the way, I'm just making pack rats. Yeah, and that's the that's the reason the deck actually just keeps winning. Is he going to sacrifice a bunch of creatures here? Yep. Well, he has to. So two more creatures get sacrificed. Mutabolt's going to fire up. How about the red zone? Is that lethal? That's two. That, that's a that's a two-two we'll pack right and a Mutavolt. Is there a spell? Or is there an extension? I think of it's the God's hand? willing. Yeah, I think it is too. There's a block. This. It's the last, last breath. breath. It was not Cuts right. it was a, He boarded in a last breath. I'm going to kill that, and this will actually make it so Fleece Man Lion. Well, it wasn't going to die anyway. Now, that's but. an interesting card to board in. I see what he's, what he's trying to do is he's trying to not die to turn two Pack Rat on the play. Yeah. I've seen Shroud use this, too, before. He had a couple copies of Last Breath in his Green White deck at the very beginning of the year now, and boarded them in. Do you think, do you think he, he boards them in always or just on the draw? Probably always. This here's an extension of the hand. The, the inevitable has occurred. Nicholas Schoolcraft with Mono Black Devotion does take it down in three games, defeating Jason Blackmore. The Swamps do it again, my friends. There's they do it again. There's a sea of aggro decks, of burn, you know, of burn decks, for example. We had two burn decks in the top eight, but the green-white decks and the Naya decks took out the burn decks, and that cleared the way once again for Mono Black to sweep through. And in the hands of Nicholas Schoolcraft, it has taken another SCG Open title. Hey, you got to think, honestly, for Schoolcraft and the other Mono Black player, Michael Edgar, you know, the pairings here were a little bit fortunate with how they broke because the burn deck matchup is so bad. Yeah, we see no staff of the Death Magus in either of their 75s. Yeah, and so if it actually ended up getting into that matchup, that's when things would have gotten very, very hairy. But we're able to uh, we're able to dodge that matchup. You had Burn get paired against the two green aggressive decks, which is almost impossible for them to beat. And then as a result, the mono black deck kind of fades that, and then it goes on to take the tournament down. Yeah. So. So congratulations yet again to Nicholas Schoolcraft on getting the job done here. Mono Black Devotion, another week, another standard tournament, another win here for Mono Black. No Esper win for you either. Sorry about no, that. No, no Esper win.